Hello, welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. The topic we You're chose welcome. today, yeah. Uh, the topic we chose today is uh, chronic conditions. So, uh, thank you for choosing such a relevant topic. Uh, could you introduce yourself, please? Uh, I'm Tanushree Mustafi. I'm a RCI certified rehabilitation psychologist as well as a trauma focused psychotherapist. I practice out of Hyderabad, but my practice is mostly online. My organization is Begin Mental Health and Rehabilitation Services. Okay, okay. Uh, so you must have many youth who must be coming to you as clients. Right. So yes. what uh, chronic conditions uh, do most of them face that you have seen? Most of the chronic conditions that I have seen, Akash, is definitely autoimmune disorders, a lot of them, diabetes, uh, PCOD, other hormone-related hormone disorders, then depression, anxiety disorders. Um, disorders are of plenty of types, even neurodevelopmental disorders like cerebral palsy and others. I have seen plenty of youth with these disorders. Huge impact rather than relying on medicine. And no, I'm not denouncing medicine. Medicines are a required part of life, especially if you are living with chronic conditions. But at the same time, thinking medicines are the only one that impact your life and not something else is not the correct mindset. Hmm. What food you are consuming, how much exercise do you do in a day, your sleep quality as well as quantity, these three things matter a lot. So when we talk about healthy lifestyle, we talk about these things, regular consumption of food at a regular interval, as much as pos possible, nutritious food, wholesome, nutritious food food that we consume daily, preferably home cooked. Regular sleep, that means uh, between six to eight hours of sleep every day. And I know that's difficult in our urban lifestyle. Most of my clients say even their social hours are very late into night. It starts mm -hmm. after 9 p.m. So once they finish their social hour, then they have their meeting, which starts after 12 o'clock in the night. How you will get proper sleep. And it impacts. It immediately impacts your physiology. If you are living with a chronic condition, your physiology is already compromised. Now, added pressure to it, added pressure to it comes from your one your diet, which affects your gut your gut health immediately impacts your nervous system. Lack of sleep, again, goes back to your nervous system. Your nervous system is your center, right? It's running your body as well as your mind. If that cannot function properly, how will a person live a completely healthy life, right? right. As well as exercise. From physical diseases to psychological disorders, movement plays a huge role. I always teach my clients that emotions reside in your body. You cannot do anything with your emotions if you are not mindful of your body. I teach them how micro movements help move their emotion. So what are micro movements? Micro movements are small movements, like even this much, right? Okay. Small stretches. So people who cannot run, mm. can at least walk, who cannot walk, even sitting in one place can move. If they cannot move by themselves, someone can help, like a physiotherapist, help them to move their body. Even that plays an impact on your body. Mm. So I'll come back to diet movement, sleep, three pillars of your health. And these actually take care of a lot of diseases and disorders. It prevents them actively. 
since uh, disorder and disease are two terms that are used interchangeably can you please differentiate it um they are not used interchangeably not in the medical community at least right. so we have a lot of controversy at, around the word disorder nowadays we are seeing it's not a disorder per se it is a different way like if you take a particular uh, one say adhd we are saying the brain is wired differently rather mm. than it being a disorder disorder who is setting the word order mm. order means average norm right so any time you are out of the norm that's when it is going into disorder right something that is not fitting into the norm right this is a disease it's a diagnosable it is um, physiological or psych, um, physiological symptoms we can okay Done. okay uh, what are the psychological effects that a person face when they suffer to nahi bol sakta na nahi suffer nahi bol sakte when they are living with chronic conditions right okay what are the psychological effects that a person is going through when they are living with the chronic condition akash you have to understand this person's psychological makeup then this is a person whose everyday life is difficult hmm. whatever kind of chronic condition this person is living with comes with certain physiological symptoms the same thing the diet the lifestyle is impacted heavily it starts very small morning getting up is difficult i'm waking up with immense fatigue even if i'm sleep sleeping for 8 hours i am fatigued okay right? i can't eat certain things i can't go out in certain places everything is restricted everything i have to be mindful that creates a pressure right i don't know how my future will turn out to be for a young person to live with the sense of uncertainty even a young people that age if you look it everything is uncertain their career mm-hmm. is uncertain who they will be they are still figuring out who they are right so their knowledge of self even that is uncertain now add to the add to that the chronic condition and what their future might look like will i be getting same as my peers or am i already behind right so that pressure is a lot third is the financial aspect of things mm. it is heavy the burden is heavy there right they are seeing how their parents are bearing the cost and soon they also try to contribute so even that is a problem how my conjugal life will be going forward all of this there i had a patient who was diagnosed with three chronic chronic conditions and the person was telling me that it's not that i have imagined having children it's not that i dreamt about it but now that i know that that ability might be compromised that makes me sad right it's a reality for them now comes the pain many of the young people who are living with chronic conditions have immense body pain it might come in headache it might come as a uh, muscle spasms living with that chronic pain and having no control over your body think how much helplessness you feel right all of this now generates into anxiety i don't know when something will happen to me i don't know when some i will have an attack or i have started doing well and suddenly one day everything goes for a toss and i retreat back to where i am depression which starts at sadness slowly grows into depression 
then there are fluctuating mood. We see the irritability, the anger outburst, sudden. And we don't see how helpless that person is actually feeling from inside. Uh, the low self-worth, the lack of self-esteem, lot of body image issues. Rarely a chronic condition I have seen in a youth without some issue with the body image, which can come say, stay at the mild level or grow into severe body dysmorphic disorder. But I have seen them both. So yes, it impacts a lot. Someone going through a fatal condition, is there any kind of uh, counseling available for them uh, to have some en enhanced quality of life? Uh? Definitely. From counseling to psychotherapy, all options are available. Um, first comes the psychoeducation, that means knowledge. One knowledge about the disorder or the chronic condition that you are living with, knowing fully well what are what is the progression, what are the things that I can do, what are the things I cannot. Also knowledge about my rights, it, this one matters a lot because um, our country is not very disability friendly in structure. Mm. Okay, it's not. Uh, the designs are making progress in that, but current condition is it is not, right? So knowing about my rights, knowing about what I can access or not, how to advocate for my access, these are very required. So one kind of counseling will address that. The other part is the deeper psychotherapy. So in rehabilitation field, when we apply psychotherapy, the modalities are same Modal, as a person without a chronic condition or a person with chronic condition, the therapy modality doesn't change. So there are Rogerian, humanitarian, or person-centric uh, psychotherapy, classical and Freudian analysis, CBT and other behavior therapies, trauma-focused school of psychology, family therapy, all are available but we orient it towards the knowledge of the disability. Disability that is originating from the chronic condition. The sense of, I am not able to do something. I am not able to take part in something which is creating the isolation. I'm going away from the mainstream. So how to bring these people back to the mainstream? That's where rehabilitation psychologists come. So these are the psychotherapies that are available. And as a rehabilitation psychologist, how do you help them cope up with uh, the heavy amount of side effects of the medications that they're taking? Medications comes with side effect. Medications, we have done a lot of research. Thankfully, we have reached here where we are at least able to give medication, but medications are not perfect. It's not a perfect science yet, right? So yes, they do have side effects. One, we encourage the doctor always to give the, psycho, the education about the side effects, that these are the effects that you can have. But we focus more on the diet and lifestyle because that's the only way you can counter some of the effects. Obviously, effects won't be gone, gone completely. Yeah. They will be there. But knowing beforehand that these are the things, like if you're living with migraine, eating casein, cheese, might spike it. If your body becomes acidic, you will have more pains. It's a this knowledge everybody doesn't have. Yeah. So to tell them that. If you do not sleep for a proper time, if you don't eat regularly, the food that you are consuming is not right and your body turns acidic, you will have more pain. Even you have anxiety, depression, body will turn acidic. So to have this kind of knowledge is to 
be able to implement them that is required so what are the some of the common risk factors that are associated with chronic ailments any chronic ailments have two sides of things one is the genetics genetics after one is born nothing much can be done it is right. already done you are born with it right but yes there are certain risk that is carried in your genes which can be prevented the other side of things is the nurturers hmm. we live in a very urban kind of society our society encourages hustle hustle we mm. appreciate how much more we are working so the first things that we sacrifice is what we are eating right we don't eat regularly we don't eat proper food rather we are going more towards junk food and even worse than that processed food mm. that is definitely a risk factor already the food that i mentioned that the food that we are consuming it is already adulterated right so to be to notice what i am eating whether i am eating regularly if i don't do that that is a risk factor one two sacrificing sleep the less you sleep the higher your chances physical activity i know many people who will say that um, oh no i joined a gym and i exercise regularly are you resting your body also do you do both because both are required you cannot be doing one and not the other both one isolation this one has become a social disease in our world today right. i meet so many youth who say we don't have friends much and then the pandemic came it became so difficult because video calls are not enough mm. i don't know what how do i survive without a uh, a college or a university where i was amongst friends every day amongst a group every day once or twice getting on a group video call or calling my friend daily on phone that doesn't serve the purpose yet yeah. then i see the young adults who just fresh out of college and join jobs again very isolated life has become about weekend parties but other than that meaningful connection very less getting them to go to a point where they connect with other people we don't get that very surface level connections where everyone is coming together for a purpose doing that and going back but to have someone with you to know that someone understands you someone gets you very less isolation is also a risk factor the more withdrawn you are the more the psychological impact and if you are having a psychological impact if you are living with sadness or anxiety for a long time it is bound to affect your body hmm. and if you have genetic predisposition towards depression and anxiety and if you suffer from a stressor event such as a major life change so you are more likely to suffer from such conditions they more likely to have such conditions right it is difficult to answer this question because how do you get to know that you um so no. yes if you are from someone from your previous generation mm-hmm. has a diagnosed depression diagnosed anxiety disorder then yes it might be possible that you have the genetic makeup for it yeah. and depends on so many nurturance factors also what condition what mm. environment you grew up in right what kind of care giving you got what kind of peers you got how was your own temperament 
temperament again attributes to genetics also it's your own also how you responded to the world as you started growing right so it's very complex you cannot separate these traits these are all together always right would you say the consumption of illicit drugs can uh, enhance or progress a condition at the psychological in a faster way definitely tobacco and alcohol tops this chart especially when we are talking about genetic makeup as well as the natural side of it over consumption of these things over consumption of substances definitely heightens the risk for chronic conditions okay and uh, means it prevent bhi jai hai ki matlab active row and tabhi ko ro sab matlo prevention ke andar health check up aayega genetic testing aayega before marriage then okay. active okay. lifestyle ko definitely then uh, what else um, secondary prevention mein government awareness programs and the better health system okay and uh, medical insurance ke bare mein bhi matlab that's not a prevention person no but it can help you uh, but would you recommend taking insurance definitely i have less knowledge but i have heard there are specialized insurance now in india which covers chronic condition but i am not very knowledgeable on that okay then let it be square in see uh what are the steps that can be taken to prevent chronic conditions definitely go for health checkups regularly at a certain interval depending on your age go for health checkups before getting married i would advise get a genetic testing done get to know which kind of genes you are carrying especially if you are carrying genes for any particular disorder um that really helps maintain a active lifestyle i know this is very tricky when you are young and you want to live life fully but if you try it is possible at least some yeah. aspects of it, right yeah. as much as possible try doing that connect with other people in any way possible you must be having some interest why don't you join a group go out i know it it really feels very vulnerable when you are going out when you are approaching someone but trying to have that meaningful connection right. not just having a good time together but that meaningful connection every day one part of the day reserve that to connect with someone even a stranger even that helps maintaining a hobby helps immensely why because it gives you joy immunization definitely very very important it helps to prevent many diseases many disorders watch your sleep have minimum 6 to 8 hours of sleep mandated substance use i know this is the time but be mindful what you are consuming how much you are consuming get to know more about it before you consume it okay uh, what are the social impacts that can happen when one is uh, going through a chronic illness in a community everyone matters now think with our urban lifestyle and this kind of diseases slowly the number is going up right how many people we are losing how many people slowly withdrawing from the mainstream community cannot thrive like that it is not possible how will the community even thrive with so many people with so much chronic conditions have we made our community accessible to them 
have we made our community inclusive enough so that they take care of these people? We are losing community members. That's the biggest social impact that's happening. Akash, I want to talk about something else also, because when you mention community, medical community is a huge part of this, especially for the people who are living with chronic conditions. And I struggle to send them to doctors. Why? Because these are excellent doctors with excellent treatment plan, the knowledge, everything. They lack bedside manners. They don't treat their clients empathically. They don't have time. While I understand the pressure on them, because in a hospital, they are visiting a lot of people every day. It's a huge pressure, but additional two minutes to greet your patient, to talk empathically, not to trivialize their symptoms, to hear them out makes a huge difference. Otherwise, most of them drop out. Instead of a doctor, they go to other people not certified, not qualified, those practitioners. And that practice is increasing alarmingly. So as a community, if we can do something, we can practice empathy for these people, we can try to be inclusive towards them, that will be a huge help. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, you have been very informative and uh, I really admire what you're doing. Please keep it up. Thank you, Akash. It was my pleasure to come today. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Bye.